Tennessee's biggest rival is, let me ask you, is it Vanderbilt or Kentucky, Caleb? Because that's our new poll question. And I know, okay, so I think between the two, the bigger rival is Kentucky for this reason. Tennessee and Kentucky have like this unspoken thing of Kentucky owns Tennessee in basketball, Tennessee owns Kentucky in football. The fight is who's lesser owned in the other sport. Okay. Is that fair to say? And by the way, oh, Tennessee is significantly winning that battle right now because they are much lesser owned in basketball than Kentucky is in football because Rick Barnes kind of owns John Calipari, if you think about it. Okay. And so it's our, it's our poll question right now. It's on the YouTube page. And Tennessee's biggest rival is Kentucky Vandy neither. Um, let me go ahead and tell you. Bank on it brought to you by Commercial Bank. It's neither. And I'll tell you why. Commercial Bank is your neighborhood bank. What makes us different from other banks? We understand that every customer has unique opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. We don't expect you to fit into the same box as the next person or business. Whether it's purchasing a home, saving for your child's future, or planning for your next vacation, we're with you every step of the way to navigate life's big decisions. Commercial Bank. Life made better. Okay, let me go ahead and answer this question for you, if I may. Uh, neither of those are rivals. Why? Because... Kentucky has lost 35 of 38 kids. I mean, that's that's not a rival. Tennessee was not one of Alabama's rivals during the Saban era until 2022. And I would actually argue until this year, because then you've truly established that was not a fluke and what they did in the first half last year, too. But Vanderbilt has only beaten Tennessee five times, six, well, let's say six times since uh, 1983. They play every year. Caleb, neither one of these games are rivalry games. Neither one of these games affect recruiting. Unless Derek Dooley's in charge, you're going after two different sets of athletes. I, I'd, I, I'm going to challenge you right now to try to convince me that either one of these are truly a rival in every sense of the word. Rivalries are not just about how competitive a series is. Rivalries are about history, hatred, things like that. Um, Dave, I'm sorry, but like Tennessee fans harbor a level of disdain for Kentucky and Vanderbilt for different reasons. Um, I think they find Vanderbilt fans annoying and also, uh, you know, kind of, you're not no better than me type of feeling towards Vanderbilt because, you know, they're all fancy pants uh, lawyers, basically. <laughs> um, with Kentucky, it's more, honestly, an elitist rivalry where Tennessee's like, uh, we're the elite part of East Tennessee. You guys belong in the coal mines to Kentucky. And I think, so there, I, I actually disagree. I don't think it's just about how competitive something is. I think sometimes there can be genuine hatred between schools whether or not there's a uh, competitive fire. Notre Dame Navy, that's not a rivalry in the truest sense of the word. Notre Dame owns Navy, but I mean, I still consider it a rivalry. Like they, See, they I, don't. Don't want, I do. And by the way, and I'm going to say this and Tennessee fans are really going to hate me for this. And I'm sorry. Vanderbilt's more of a rivalry for Tennessee than Tennessee is for Florida. And oh, you go I back agree to with that. Why would anybody hate you? No, I agree with that. I, after what Nick Saban said earlier this year on college game day, I think Alabama is Tennessee's biggest rival. Yes, but Tennessee's not. I mean, what I'm saying is like Tennessee fans want to say that Florida's a rivalry. Well, if Vanderbilt's not a rivalry because Tennessee owns Vanderbilt, Dave, the past 20 years, Florida owns Tennessee worse than Tennessee owns Vanderbilt. No, but there are more factors in that, too. You also have, I mean, who is Vanderbilt's rival if it's not Tennessee? With Florida, you would at least say Miami, Florida State, possibly Georgia. I mean, Vanderbilt's only option, Kentucky's only option, other than Louisville, is to latch on to some sort of pseudo-rivalry with Tennessee. These are not rivalries. Well, Kentucky and Vanderbilt themselves are rivalries, to be fair. I mean, Kentucky oh, and Vanderbilt really? itself. Rivalries I mean, those for what? No, I think Vanderbilt and Kentucky are a rivalry against each other um and it's competitive 
It's I mean, this all-time series is 48 to 44. It doesn't matter that there's nothing to play for. Dave, Mississippi State Ole Miss. That game is never for anything of significance. Are you going to tell me that's not a rivalry game? Um, I think that's no, the second they're best. in the same state. That's different. I, I think Mississippi State Ole Miss is the best rivalry in the SEC. If you actually watch the game, I don't care that they're not playing. For no, anything. I wouldn't argue that. I love that um, game. Um, yeah, I, and I that's that's apples and oranges. What I'm saying is, look, it's not a rivalry in the traditional sense of the word that they're not equally competitive. But it is a rivalry. Like, look, let's be honest, Dave. Tennessee fans would they they don't like the idea of losing to Vanderbilt. That kind of hacks them off a little bit. And Vanderbilt wants to desperately beat Tennessee more than any other team every year. So, I mean, let's just be honest, Dave. If I told if I told a casual Tennessee fan at the beginning of the year, um, either Kentucky or Arkansas is going to upset you this year, but that'll be your one upset. But who would you rather upset? If you're if, if for you to tell me it's not a rivalry, the Tennessee fan would have to be like, well, I don't care as long as we go 11 and one. If we lose, I don't care which one of them beats us. No, the Tennessee fan is going to be like, eh, I'd rather Arkansas upset us because I don't want to lose to Kentucky. They would say that. I don't feel that at all. I think I they would absolutely that say that. I mean, we, we may run in different circles. I just don't feel that. Uh, you, oh, please. You don't think Tennessee fans won't admit it, but that, that doesn't mean that like, what I'm saying is there can be rivals because. You just don't want to deal with fan bases of people that are losing. Tennessee don't want to deal with Kentucky fans after losing to them in football. That's the truth of the matter, and I don't blame them for that. But, yes, there is a – it's not a – Dave, it's the second oldest played game in the SEC, Tennessee-Kentucky. Okay. It's the second, it's New poll second. question, and I realize there's a grammatical error in there because my finger slipped, not because I don't know how to write two, two, or two. But who do you hate losing to most, Vandy or Kentucky? I think it's going to be overwhelmingly Vanderbilt, but I don't think that either one is a, a rival. Well, that's, I, I mean, how about this? There's also an actual, like, there was once a product for the Tennessee Kentucky rivalry. And I want to get into this the beer barrel. Can we bring back the beer barrel? No. What do you think, Dave? Why? No. Dave, Dave is all like, these youngins shouldn't be drinking. Go ahead. Tell me why they shouldn't bring back the beer barrel, Dave. I want the beer no, barrel No, because if they brought it back now, it would change the whole – it would it would bring back – for those that don't know, can, can you update us with the history of it and why they stopped the, with the beer barrel in 98? Is that right? Uh, I believe it was 98, wasn't it? Okay. And the, it was, that, was, that, that was based on the that horrible Kentucky accident, wasn't it? Yes, um, so then you would have to revisit all of that. And that, to me, um, there's just no point in doing it. And I will say this. Um, I understand the smoking of cigars after the Alabama game. Pretty cool tradition. I like how we're not as PC as we used to be because a couple of years ago, oh, they're giving kids cigars. Oh, my gosh. Um, but now we're, we're kind of okay with it as we're coming back around, I think as a society, just some normalcy that's debatable, but the beer barrel. Now I know what you're going to say that you should lower the drinking age to 18. And I agree with that, but it's not 18. So the majority of your players in a non COVID world aren't old enough to drink beer. And you're propping that up as, something that should be fought for and won for. So to me, it's an antiquated notion and probably not the best idea for the majority of its its lifetime. Yeah, but okay, here is, and this is my big argument, Kentucky, and yes, for those who don't know, in 1998, the week they were set to play Tennessee, they had a horrible car crash um in which i believe the name was arthur steinmans was the player who was killed right it was one player right or was it multiple players that were killed i think it was one that was killed multiple injured and there was alcohol involved um and it happened the week of the tennessee kentucky game and so they got rid of the beer barrel well one it happened before the game so it's not like the beer barrel was a celebration uh it wasn't like the crash was the result of the beer barrel two it's not like Kentucky would have hoisted the beer barrel anyway. They lost to Tennessee that year. And three, hoisting a beer barrel does n- is not a green light to go get drunk and drive. I mean, this is this is what I'm talking about with the hypocrite with the hypocrisy of it. Just because, th- I mean, you don't want to bring this up, but alcohol was involved in that crash. 
Okay. No I, one is saying drink and drive because you celebrate with a beer barrel after winning a game. Okay, but I think you're being maybe a little bit hypocritical here when you're you're talking about. I understand you you see hypocrisy on one side. I kind of see hypocrisy in your stance on the other side that you're admitting that players are oftentimes too young to drink beer. And well, no, legally they are. Okay. You have to yes, admit. Legally. Now we can debate oh, oh. whether or not we can debate whether yes. or not it's right. And you and I actually agree on that. But I, I mean, to me, you wouldn't. I mean, there's some gray areas with uh, hemp and stuff like that, but you wouldn't, you know, I don't think you would do the hemp box brought to you by the hemp house, hemp house chat with two T's.com, hemp house chat with two T's.com. Maybe you would, maybe you should replace it with the hemp box, the battle for the hemp box. I mean, I'm look, when you know what? Before Lee, weed was legal everywhere, uh, the places that it was very popular, Oregon and Washington, the Oregon Washington game should have been the hemp bowl. I'd have loved it. I wouldn't care. Thumb your nose at stupid laws. Okay. And a stupid law is that 18 year olds can't drink. All right. So, yeah. Okay. You can send them to go die halfway across the world for a stupid war, but you can't let them drink a beer. No, bring back the beer barrel. I want the beer barrel back. You know what? This will be great for you, Dave. Um, when uh, UNLV plays Nevada, call it the Hooker Bowl, okay? Because it's Nevada prostitution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it was up to Caleb, uh, every time you play Miami, it's for the Coke mirror. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, Miami versus uh, what would, who would be Miami's best? Florida International. The Coke Bowl. The Coke. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, look. what I what, Terrible I'm people just, right now. We are terrible people, but no one thinks that like, I mean, well, maybe some do, but like, I don't think it's like as universally accepted that Coke should be legal the way it is. <laughs> I don't want to get beer it. Okay. But what I'm saying is like, I think we all agree that 18 year old college kids should be allowed to drink a beer every now and then. And maybe even have some liquor. I think you should have the, it should be the battle of the whiskey barrel, Kentucky bourbon, Tennessee whiskey. Boom. Battle of the whiskey barrel. Retire the beer, but it's like, y'all didn't want the beer barrel. We're going to liquor. Try that. This the battle of the whiskey barrel. I just want to be clear. This is not Tennessee, but I did have a player one time that told me um, that uh, cocaine had become popular among the team. And I said, well, that seems weird because I thought, you know, I'm, I don't partake necessarily, but I, I I thought that that made you lose weight. And I said, so how did that affect your play? And he goes, we are fantastic in the first and third quarters. <laughs> and then it wears off. He said, our kick coverage and kick return is unbelievably physical out of the shoot in both halves. That is I'm not saying, a Tennessee player that told me that. It's a player from saying, another program. For the first, you know, Josh Heupel's program was known, particularly when he first took over at Tennessee, for dominating the first oh, third quarters. Oh, no, it's not that. It they, Dave says that jo Dave accuses Josh Heupel no. of giving his players. <laughs> yes, <laughs> offering it up uh, uh, with Tony Montana style. Uh, just there you go, big bowl in the middle, kind of like the Jacksonville Jaguars had that axe, and then a punter almost cut its foot off. <laughs> you did not know about that. They had an axe and a big piece of wood, so you chopped the wood. And the punter came in, and he hadn't chopped a lot of wood in his life and almost cut his foot off. The irony is that it was a punter, too. So there was a, total, a lot of good things about that. <laughs>